Okay, good morning. Um, I think we'll get started, try and, um, try and keep vaguely to time. So first up today, we've got uh, Lennart, who's from CallStats.io, and uh, Handley, his talk is on the slide, title on the slide, so I don't have to try and remember how to pronounce it. How active WebRTC testing, how active WebRTC connectivity tests are improving user experiences. Thank you, Lennart. All right, thank you very much. So I'm Lennart, and as so nicely introduced, Today is all about um, active WebRTC connectivity tests. And the key point here is really active. Um, this is something we deployed maybe two and a half years ago. For a long time, it was just a tool for us. And for about a year now, we have been also building it as a product. Um, so we are sharing a bit here about why we build it and what are the use cases for such a thing. So if anybody is interested in that. Um, and you can see if it's also something for you. So shortly about my person, my background is mostly academic. Um, came to Finland uh, to do my PhD and then joined CallStats. And basically throughout my career, I have been working on measurements, first TCP based, then in mobile networks, and now at CallStats, it's basically the thing we do, right? So um, measurements is what we do. Um, so um, I was also the, the engineer which uh, developed this, um, this tool. Uh, it was one of the first projects, basically, I or one of, one of the first projects I worked on. And um, I'm really happy to share it with you, like how far it has come until now. Uh, so shortly to call stats, I think you've seen this slide already yesterday, so I won't go into many details. But like uh, the one thing I want to highlight here is that this one billion uh, data points we have each month, this is the number for passive measurements, right? So um, passive meaning we're taking measurements throughout a call, throughout a conference to make an assessment on how well it works. Um, and this talk is in contrast about active measurements, meaning we are creating additional traffic to get uh, get a measurement, right? So that's uh, the difference we have to look at here. So shortly about like who uses monitoring, like what are the persons that are actually interested in getting to more, more? It should be just everybody, hopefully, right? If, if you don't measure a system, then, then you don't know what it's doing. So it's really important. But um, a few people here are um, basically operations and architects, so also the people that actually uh, deploy the system. They, they work hand in hand that the architect builds a system that is uh, well scalable, you know, then operations can work on how to actually put it to production. So we have that use case. Um, then product manager and developers, they work hand in hand to build new features that are then deployed by architects and operations. And uh, specifically actually for, uh, for call centers, we have then the agent supervisor, which is uh, also management position. So, and he takes care of that the agents have everything they, they need, um, that they perform well, that, that you know, the, the, the calls are being handled, etc. And then at the last one, we have the agent or the user. So the agent for call centers or, or user for kind of any kind of conference calls, uh, team members, and um, Actually, for call stats, the agent or user currently is a bit, bit out there, right? So the user might not even know partly we exist, right? Because it's kind of the companies building the products that uh, are using our product, and the end user um, might then call the customer support to get more information, which then might use call stats. But so um, the agent or user currently has very little tools to actually get more information often. Um, so for setups, uh, I want to talk shortly about what are the different setups we're considering here, uh, just to get a bit about the diversity um, that is being deployed. First, we have the call centers. Um, for as I said, there's an agent. The agent is the guy who is actually who is making or taking the calls, uh, who is uh, sitting there. Um, he's connected via WebRTC, at least in this case since we're only monitoring 
WebRDC calls, right? So we're considering call centers that are based on WebRDC technology. They are connected to some media gateway, and then we have callers coming in one by one, which are handled by this agent. And uh, the infrastructure and architecture, the operations, uh, in this case, they have to take care of where do I put these, these media gateways so that they are very close to the agents. Um, the, the locations and the amount of agents should be roughly known beforehand because you know where you hire them. You, you, you know, you know w where, they, where they work and you also know how many they are right, to handle your system. But uh, the amount of callers that's coming in might, might vary quite a bit. So that's a bit of an unknown partly. Product manager and supervisor, um, they work very closely with the agent uh, to give the agent all the tools they need uh, to perform the job as well as possible. And uh, the agent basically sits there and uh, listens to calls, you know, if they're coming in, is taking them. So examples for this is uh, banking, hotel reservations, and also maybe customer support for, for ISPs something like that, so people you would call to get more information or, or debug stuff. Uh, then we have something we call marketplaces, which is similar to the call center setup, but um, uh, it's purely WebRDC based. So um, the, the user might be a, a, a doctor or, or, or a teacher, right? And uh, people connect to them to, to look at, uh, to get more information or, or diagnosis. And in this case, the user amount might vary quite a bit and a uh, significant difficult difference here to the previous use case is also that uh, the user might not be there sitting all the time connected, but they might join the call on demand, right? So that's a big difference. Um, and then the third use case we have is team collaboration, a really important thing to have, especially for, for distributed teams as we should all know. Um, and in, in, in that case, you, if you have more team members joining the call, then you have likely an SFU. Um, the, the, um, so the, 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 the users can be anywhere around the world, which makes it uh, quite difficult, so it's not so localized anymore. In the previous two use cases, you might have quite localized, but now you have to consider more of a global deployment in, 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 in many cases. And uh, the product manager also has a significant difference here in that uh, before the user or agent was basically on the team, right? It was the people you're working with on a daily basis. But in, in this case, uh, the people who are using your software um, might not be anymore on your team or are likely not if you have something like Jitsi, for example. Um, then you're providing the software, but the, you have basically to infer what the user wants to develop new features. So the, the challenges that the different uh, personas face in these different, uh, in this different uh, setups, um, the end user uh, is kind of responsible himself for establishing connectivity. It might be problems uh, with a firewall or restricted networks. Wi-Fi might not be working, or if you're in public places, all kinds of funny things can happen. Um, and also, once he joins the call, like he cares about if the connectivity is lost, uh, or how is the quality, can people actually understand me or, or see me well, depending on the use case. Um, product manager and developer cares more about groups of users, so how do these people behave, what do I need to satisfy the demands. Uh, maybe even in different regions, it might be very different. If you talk about Indian market or, or US, or maybe it's even in, in, in smaller, smaller regions as well. Um, the agent supervisor, the special case for, uh, for call centers, uh, looks at the agent performance, is the agent providing good quality because there's nothing more annoying if you call your ISP because nothing is working and then the, the, the agent who is taking your call, you can't understand him or anything, right? So uh, you have to really make sure that this agent is performing well. And uh, then there's also sites. Uh, which is a call center term for a specific location or a part of a location that is managed as an entity. Um, so the agent supervisor looks at the site and if the site is performing well. And then lastly, we have operations and architects. 
um, they care about the reachability of the deployed software, um, the location on where should I deploy them so it's closest to the to my my target group, and then of course server performance and scale. Um, if the server doesn't perform, like it, it might actually be a bottleneck. So. In all these different uh, cases, we have passive monitoring, which works great, right? So uh, for a lot of these cases, passive monitoring uh, can give you a lot of information uh, if, um, if you have like consistent uh, and very, like you, you need a lot of data to, 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 um, to infer all, uh, all cases, right? So, um, but what if a user is not making calls? Like Maybe it's the first call they're making and they are contacting you and say like, why, why was this shitty? Like you're probably sitting there like, okay, well I have this one call which might not even establish. I don't have any data on you. I, I can't say anything, right? Um, so this comes down to too little data to infer a problem. This might be uh, because in this time, uh, for this time frame, you don't have enough data to infer for a particular user or a particular region. Um, so, but what if you could just use the user as probes, right, to get more data, to make uh, better assessments on how the system works as a whole, and then also giving power to to the end user as well, right? So, if they had more information about uh, about what they can do to debug a specific problem, um, then they might not bother your customer support so much, right? So, if if they can do more. Um, that would be great. And, and this is something we will now um, look into uh, with our active monitoring. Um, so a short description. Um, our active monitoring is developed as a JavaScript library. Um, so it runs in the browser. And you, you, you can uh, add it to whatever website you want, right? So you might add it to, to uh, the page where your call is happening or some other page. Just uh, it can run um, wherever you want. Uh, it's based on WebRTC data channels. And uh, currently it measures against our turn servers, right? So CSIO turn server, you can run it against any kind of turn server you want. You just have to give it some, some credentials. Um, and it performs a series of active network measurements, so it generates traffic to infer uh, a lot of very useful data, including connectivity, uh, so is there any media connectivity, right? Can I even make any call? Uh, a lot of ICE data, so it might be that the user can't connect via, via UDP, but then TCP might work, but it has some performance issues, possibly. Um, and then basic network metrics like RTT, loss, and throughput, so th this gives you already a pretty good picture on what the user will be capable of doing even before he enters a call. Um, so one thing I want to make really clear here is that uh, this active monitoring now runs on the same machines uh, where actually later the calls are made from, right? So it's not like you have a random location and you're testing your infrastructure. It's actually the user's machine which performs these measurements. Um, and this is exactly the the machine which will later potentially uh, make calls in your system, right? All right, so um, I have some, some use cases I want to share with you on one where this can be actually uh, useful. Um, the first one is if any user is joining a conference call, right? So the user visits the web page, uh, enters the call, um, and he asks himself maybe questions like, Will I be able to, to make a call uh, with sufficient quality? Can people actually understand me? Uh, can I make a call at all? Like, is there something that uh, prevents, uh, prevents me from, from entering the call, um, from participating? And um, if the last call wasn't so great, ma maybe now I want to know more, like what, what might be the problem? And uh, the, the kind of core part here is, is the problem on my side, right? So if, if the problem is not on my side, it's not much you can do. You can contact customer support to get more information maybe. 
but if the problem is on my side as a user, then I can potentially make uh, changes myself to, to Im improve the situation. And for this, uh, we have, uh, for example, our network test page, network.callsets.io. Um, it basically, it, it is just a simple website which includes uh, this library we developed and you can just run a test and it will uh, tell you if stuff went okay or not. So for example, in this case, there weren't any problems, right? So this is great. We had uh, media connectivity uh, and all the networking metrics seems to be great. Um, so that tells you like, yeah, it's fantastic, right? But if you have too low throughput, you might not be able to make, um, to make video calls. Uh, if, uh, if the RTT is too high, you might talk over each other. Um, so uh, th this gives kind of an indication on, uh, will, will, will a follow-up call be successful for me? Will I, uh, will I have a good performance? So I know beforehand already for myself um, if this will be okay or if there's something uh, I have to do. For the second case, it's also about the user, but um, now the user is always available, like for example in the case when we have a call center agent. Uh, in, in that case, the, as I explained before, the agent sits there, he's uh, on the side all the time and he waits basically for incoming calls, uh, hopefully not too long, otherwise it would be quite inefficient. Yeah. No. But um, the, the web page is always open. And in this case, uh, we can actually check um, quite well how it, it will work and if there are intermittent connectivity issues that needs to be resolved. Um, so this is especially important uh, for cases where the agent is either traveling or, or works from home. Um, so I guess when, when they're sitting in, in, in their actual call center locations, like then the network is checked, right? So you might not have any issues. Uh, or at least it's not on your side to to make it. But um, with all this web RDC enabling all kinds of new possibilities, it might well be that the agents are working from home or from public places. So it's a whole different new environment they have to deal with. And uh, for this case is even better because you can uh, make a lot of measurements. You can make these measurements like once in a while every few minutes when the agent's not making calls to get uh, kind of not spot measurements like we had before, but you get a series of measurements that actually tells you um, how is the performance over a longer period of time, right? So you get a really good assessment, is it stable or, or uh, other, um, other issues that happen from time to time. Um, so here, for example, we see our um, Amazon Connect uh, contact control panel, the CCP. So Amazon Connect is uh, one of the providers. It's just an example, uh, right? So uh, just an example, um, but it, it shows kind of uh, what is possible. We, we took this dialer and uh, we added uh, this library to it. So what you can now do is you have um, a performance indicator already here in the top, which tells you like um, what is my current situation Will I be able to make calls? And if you want to get more information, uh, we can go to this page. And you see down there that over the course, I've made several measurements, and it seems to be fairly stable, right? So now I can be pretty sure that, um, that my network performance is good enough to make calls, right? It's, it's, it's much better than a one-time measurement. Uh, you have more confidence that this will actually work. Uh, in upcoming calls to provide a good, uh, good performance to to call us. I can't hear anything with this noise. Yes, basically yes. It doesn't run, of course, when there are calls ongoing, but uh, you can also set it yourself. Uh, so um, thanks for the question. It's a good question. Um, so in, in this case, I went there and just pressed the rerun button a few times to get a screenshot, right? But uh, in, in general, what you can do is run, for example, this measurement every five minutes while the, the agent is not taking any calls, right? So, um, or two minutes or 10 minutes, I don't know, um, something like that to get a 
more measurements. Yeah. Um, use case number three, again, the user. The user is always available, but this time it's about team collaboration. There are many tools where, where you're basically sitting in your team collaboration tool. Um, and th this is about uh, what I hinted at earlier, um, is about if the customer support gets a query and uh, they have to say, like, is the quality for this user, is it good, right? So I if the user makes a call and it's crap, it might be his first call, it's they're still going to customer support, like, this is not working. Why is this not working? What, what can I do about it, right? And in, in, in this case, if the customer support has access not to this one conference, but to a series of measurements done before, they have a much better picture of what is actually going on, right? So in this case, it's more about getting more data on the problem, getting more data points over time uh, to make a good assessment um, on if there are intermittent problems or if it was a one-off to have more context in, um, about the user. Number four, agent supervisor. So this was the guy who were kind of a, a management uh, position in, in call centers who cares about a group of agents that they perform their, their task as expected with good quality. Um, and uh, here it's basically if the agent might just not care, right? They're doing their job, they're sitting there, they're taking calls, they might not care very well. Um, maybe they get paid per call or I don't know what's the business model, but um, so sometimes it's just up to the agent supervisor uh, to make sure that the customers are served properly. And what can the agent supervisor do, right? Um, so he might ask question like, can I make sure that my agents will provide good quality calls? And if they are not, maybe he can take, uh, this, is, this is a bit harsh, right? But you might just say, okay, like this is not working, just take this agent offline. Um, that is pretty harsh, but we can also like maybe give them less important calls if their quality is not so good, right? So n not the big enraged customers uh, who were, were nothing is working, but, but maybe just the like inquiry part or something like that, right? So, uh, and uh, for those, spider, just a second, all right. Uh, yeah, for, for these cases we have uh, on our dashboard, um, so all these tests we do is also sent to our backend, so we can also make now aggregated views. Uh, this is what we call smart connectivity tests. And in this case, for example, I went to our dashboard. I didn't want to use any customer data, so I just used our own app, which has very little calls, uh, of course. But uh, here I filtered, for example, for uh, bad RTTs or high packet loss. And then I get a list of agents, right? 100% of, of the agent, for example, this 2B, whatever, like 100%, which is one call, it's not very representative, but anyway, 100% of their measurements were actually bad. So I might, if this is a high number and they're all bad, I might actually want to do something about it, right? Number five, second to last, um, this is about infrastructure teams, right? So in this case, it's about contact center infrastructure. So what if I want to put up a new site, right? So I have maybe a new location somewhere around the world that I want to establish something to serve a uh, customer more locally, or I want to extend my existing contact center uh, to provide additional functionality or just a new group of agents. I might have to set up uh, a, a new system there, so a new part of the team, which is then called a site. And for those cases, um, I could of course just go there, I can build it, and then just hope everything works. But that's probably not what, what, what people want to do, right? They want to know beforehand if this is actually working or not. And I'm not saying they don't have any tools like that, but I'm saying like this might also be a new thing to test where we can um, see uh, if everything is going well. So the question is like, is the location good to reach the user base I care about? Uh, if I have multiple ISPs, like some might work better in specific regions than others, right? So I want maybe to test that. Or uh, is there performance variation in time? 
So if I choose an ISP or the connections I have, it might be that in the early evening when everybody returns from home, the network might just be not good, right? So I want to know that beforehand. Uh, and this is called site surveys. So if you have a new site or an existing site, you want to make sure that over time everything works well. And again, smart connectivity test, um, we can see uh, with this with this active measurements, we get a sense already, even before we put anybody on call, on how is the performance of this site going? Will it be able to make a significant amount of call or the amount of calls I expect? All right, and number six, this is the last one, general infrastructure monitoring, so also maybe for team collaboration or something. Um, so this is about running automated tests against my infrastructure, right? So if you would do it traditionally, you might say, yeah, okay, I have something running in the clouds um, and I might test uh, against my infrastructure from, from the cloud. Um, but what if you could just test them from actually user locations, right? So not from some, uh, some random point in the internet, but actually from the locations where the user is later on making the calls into my infrastructure, right? So there might be uh, other problems that can occur if people are around the world. Um, so this gives additional insight, but I'm not talking about load or regression tests, so this is a bit out of here. Uh, I'm talking more about reachability from around the world, uh, from the actual user locations I have and want to serve, and also uh, performance, right? So if the, if the whole network path uh, between the user and my infrastructure is messed up or it goes some weird ways. It might have significant performance implications that I might not be aware of if I just measure from, from the cloud, right, which is always relatively good, well connected. All right, so overall, I would say uh, active measurements are pretty useful for us. They have proven uh, to be a very good addition. They will never... Um, they will never replace passive monitoring, right? So this is kind of the, the core. Uh, you have to generate traffic, which might be bad for mobile users, where you should not do it in most cases. Um, so passive monitoring is really, really important, but the active monitoring uh, can give you additional insights, more data, and you might just be more aware of what is happening and have m just more data to, to debug problems and uh, see what is happening in your system. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. So we've got, well, we're, we're back on time. We've got two minutes left in theory, but we were a bit late starting. So questions, hang on. Gail. Um, thank you. And this is good for desktops, but what about mobiles? Like they move a lot and change uh, from Wi-Fi to 3G from one Wi-Fi to the other. So what did you do in the mobile case? Yeah, uh, it's a good question and uh, not uh, probably not an easy solution. Um, so this is a tool we provide, but it's probably up to the app uh, and the app developers who, uh, who develop the app to decide in which cases should this be run or not, right? So if you have something like uh, mobile users, in some countries, you might not have problems because uh, they have just unlimited data. But if you are in, in countries and have deployments there um, where they are generally pretty restricted, um, then you might just want to disable these tests. So that is what I can say about it. Yeah. Any more? Any, any more questions? No? OK, well, thank you very much, Lennart. So we've got a 10-minute break in here now, and uh, we'll be back at 10.55 with Matthew talking about Matrix.